Welcome back to another episode of Backyard Builds. This week, I'm back on the wagon and we're going to mount our fuel pump up. So what we've got is a Magna Fuel Star 300, probably way too much pump for the car, but I didn't want to limit myself. So what we're going to do first, I've already mounted the tank up, we'll go out, we'll have a look, make some measurements, see how low it's going to be and work out how we're going to make a mount for this. So here we have it, have our brand new tank mounted. So it is a brand new tank. What it is, is actually a 66 Dodge Dart tank. So these are a reproduction tank from the States. I think it was like 70 bucks for the tank, Australian, and 230 postage. But the tank that was in the car was absolutely roasted when we opened it up and tried to add a sump to it. So the reason why I've mounted the tank, as you can see, it's not flat bottom, it actually tapers up. So what we're going to do in this bottom section here is add what we call a sump, which will probably be next week's episode because we've got to order some fittings. For the time being, I want to know what the lowest part of the tank is. So from the rail, it's about 250 mil down. So that's where our sump will end up if it's flush with the bottom of here. So essentially what we're going to do is build a little box that projects that angle off with an AN fitting in the end to run to the pump. Why do I need to know that depth? Because I need the pump lower. So with a, with a pump, pumps will either push or pull. They won't do both. So essentially we need to gravity feed the pump so the pump's not working hard to suck fuel as well as push fuel. We wanted to push the fuel, so by having it lower than the lowest outlet, it will then gravity feed into the pump, and then the pump will only push, not push and pull simultaneously. So the plan is to mount it up here where we had the carter. We'll probably knock those out and start again, because our plate comes to here. Um, might try and mount it on the inside, but I know that was tough because we couldn't get the nuts or gun in there and we couldn't get the drill in there to actually put holes in. So chances are we will run it on the outside, make a little bracket that comes down, holds the pump. Hopefully it's not too visible from the outside of the car. But now I've got that measurement, we can go in, we can make a drawing and see exactly what we're gonna build. So now we've ascertained our depth. I'm just drawing a little bit of a mud map of what we're gonna build. So 225 mil down, these are essentially inside dimensions. Um, might change that to 250. Give us a little bit of clearance up on the top here. 130 across in the flat, and then 135 wide. So what we're gonna use is some three mil aluminum, kindly donated by Tom. Um, bit of a toolbox door that uh, wasn't needed anymore. So what we're gonna use to mark this out, first of all, we're gonna mark our 135. Gonna use what we call a scratch gauge. Um, my tradesman actually gave this to me. So we'll use that. And then we'll use our inside dimensions, mark our fold, cut it with the grinder and get our rough shape, go and put our fold in it, and then start to work out our mount for the Magna Star. So our scratch gauge itself is a pretty simple tool. This one's just made out of some um, stainless offcut, so some flat bar, square tube, round bar. What it's actually got welded into it is a drill bit that's been sharpened. So what this is good for doing is marking parallel lines and it's quite easy to set. So what we do is we set our ruler, we set out to here, do have our locking screw, and now that distance is 135 from that point to that edge. What we're gonna do first, Grab a flat file. Just gonna knock that edge off. Now that cuts reasonably square. Tom did do it with a one mil. So 135, oh, we're just gonna sneak it in. But essentially, we butt that side of the scratch cage up. And then we can scratch a line all the way down. So we're gonna be able to see with the grinder, 
a little bit lumpy. Should be right. Lumpy just through there. That's okay. So what I'm going to use is just a grinder with a one mil disc. Another little trick that I got taught throughout my trade was aluminium has a tendency to bind the disc up and actually fill up the disc so it doesn't cut for very long um, or is very ineffective for cutting. Take a soap. Essentially what we do is I'll wait for that. We run it in the Kega soap and what it does it actually leaves like a waxy surface on the disc so it means it doesn't bind up and clog in the aluminium. Trap for the young players is go and buy the bestest smelling soap because it does actually smell once it starts to burn and if you got a shitty soap it smells shitty. <laughs> so just another little uh, tip for cutting aluminium with a one mil. Um, I think today's code word can be soap. Let's cut this up. I'll then mark it for what else we need and go from there. As you can see, aluminium makes it quite dirty. So what I've just done is I've just marked out my final cut line and my edge that I'm going to screw it off to. How did I come up with this size as a flat? Okay, so what we're working with is what we call an inside dimension. So it's 255mm from this point to this point and 130 from this point to this point. I've actually added five mil, and I'll, because of these, but I'll explain these in a second. So if we were to do outside measurements, we'd actually have to have a bend deduction in there, but bend deduction is something more that I want to discuss on this episode. So that will probably be in next week's episode when we make up that little steel sump for the wagon tank. So tune back in for that one. I just want to mention that that trick with the soap as well also works on abrasives. So sanding discs and stuff as well, it stops them clogging up as well. Now cut the size. What we're gonna now need to do is put our bolt holes in. So, a bit hard one handed, but we'll get it there. So we need to make a measurement between centers. So the easiest way to go for centers is we actually go edge to edge. So this side's actually a little bit damaged. This is a second hand pump. So from that, edge to edge, we are 38 mil. So 38 mil centers. Sit the pump where it's gonna sit. So we've gone for right for the edge, center it up. I'm gonna make that a reference point there, that edge. So now I can go 38. 30 million. And then roughly from that edge to there, we are four mil, three mil. So add three, then go to center. So that is the quickest way to find centers is go edge to edge because they're the same that way. Mark that out now, put those holes in. Mount the pump will probably orbital this piece this is the last time it will be flat and for structural structure I think we're going to actually add some dimple dies in it because this pump is quite heavy and that is quite a long bracket so we need some form of structure in there we'll add some side gussets as well but we'll get into that in a second so I've got my holes drilled I've just put them as pilot holes for the time being because I don't actually have any bolts to fit in the pump I can't find my grab kit. I've got a grab kit of UNC and UNF, and it's definitely UNF, so I have to find that in the morning. So, what I went out and did, I measured my rail. I've got 90mm rail, and I want to put a dimple die in here. So what I did was just crossed up between our fold and our rail line, and this is where we're going to put our dimple die. So I think we're going to run with this size. Looks pretty good. Probably push this one in this way, and then this one down reason for this one going down is because this is going to fold up and I need the pump to sit flat. I don't need the pump to sit up on top of the dimple die. So that's why we're going with that route. Let's do it. So what we're going to do is pre-drill. I went and bought a new step today. This is actually an Imperial because the shaft on my hydraulic ram that I use is three quarter or 19 
mil. So it's going to give us a more accurate and tolerant uh, hole with that step drill. These are really great for drilling through sheet metal as opposed to like twist bits. Twist bits jam up and walk all over the place. These are really good. So invest in some step bits. For those of you who haven't seen me use this before, this is what they call like a chassis hole punch kit. So what it is is a little hydraulic ram that actuates through here. So it's got a male and female die and it's actually going to cut the hole. So before we do, I'll grab our pender burrer. Quick run around the hole, make sure it's clean. Much tighter than that, much tighter than the 20 mil bit we had. So then what we do is we screw our top on till it grabs. Then what we've done is we've punched our round hole. Again, Penderborough. Give her a good bit of burr all the way around. The more reason to do that now is because that will be the finished hole of the dimple die. So, let our ram off. Put one out of the other. Get rid of our slug and do it again. So, I actually use the same tool, sort of jerry rigged, to punch in our dimple dies as well. Um, this tool's really handy, so if you are thinking about doing dimple dies and stuff, I definitely recommend getting one of these little hydraulic chassis punches or electrical cabinet punches um, in imperial sizes that fit your dimple dies, because most dimple dies are going to be imperial. But it makes it mobile. So if you need to do a panel that's already on the car, you can actually use this. If you can get the head in to do it, then you can actually do it on the car. Whereas dimple dying, generally, if it's already on the car, you can't dimple die because it needs to go into a, like a manual hydraulic press. So same thing again. So we bottom out, you can actually see the plate come flat. So we release it off. And there is our dimple die. So that adds quite a lot of rigidity to that part. We're gonna make some side gussets, I'll probably have dimple dies in them as well. So I said I was gonna explain what these are. These are for mounting. So what they are is essentially just like a little crush tube in any bush. So you might be wondering what bush we're going to run. Here we have a rubber grommet, just from Clark Rubber. And what I've got is my good friend, Mr. Brown the Machinist, to make us up some little crush tubes. So what that's going to allow us to do is grab our plate. What we'll do is we'll drill our mount holes out to suit those little rubber bushes or the grommets. Then we can put M6 nut certs into the rail and then an M6 bolt with a big flat washer which will rubber mount and isolate the pump because I have no doubt a motor or a pump of that size is going to run some vibration through the car. So by rubber mounting it, that essentially means that we can stop as much vibration as possible. So we're gonna run three of these. So one there, one about there, and one across here. All right, so I'll drill those out, we'll insert those. I'll take these to get zinc plated tomorrow with all these bolts here, which is for an upcoming episode of Backyard Builds where we start to actually put the wagon back together. So I put the fold in it, had to do a little bit of dolly work I probably should have checked it before, but the pan brake actually crushed the dimple die a little bit. So we just reinstated that and I had to cut the edge a little bit. But pretty happy with how that's looking so far. So our next consideration is our side gussets. So I'm just going to let that rock there a little bit. I'm going to mark here, because obviously I don't really want to put a cut out here. I'd love to come all the way out to there, but then I have to put a cut out for the fitting to go through. 
a little bit of a pain need to be able to access the fitting as well in the car so i'll mark about here and we're going to come just shy of our our 90 mil for our rail depth put make them gussets we'll probably just add a little dimple die again into that and then put those in and we'll go and get it zinc plated and then we can mount it up in the car So there's our little gussets with our little dimple die. So we went down to a one inch. These are one and a half. So these gussets pretty well sit corner to corner like that. And we'll get a nice weld along the edge there, both sides. And radius these corners in. Drill the pump holes out. I did find a bolt, so we'll put one bolt in and see how it looks. Okay, so I got it all tacked up now. So what I'm going to do is just weld it out. What we're using is a TIG welder. So this is aluminium. So our tungsten is, we're actually using a purple tungsten, which is sort of like a multi-purpose or rounder tungsten. You can use white, um, which is designated for aluminium, but these purples are all rounder. A lot of people will not weld with any stick out. I like to weld with a little bit of stick out and I can't quite get the camera to focus, but it makes a little ball on the end when we're using that alternating current. So it uses a, what we call a square wave. Um, so yeah, all right, hold this up, put it together, and we'll give you one final look at it once it's done. And uh, have a look at mounting it on the car. That's probably going to be next episode when we start to put the fuel system together fully. Okay, so hopefully... That just got that because the camera sort of just played up and went funny. So, now it's all welded together. As you can see, nice little welds. Looks like a mini turkey, but <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Pump mounts on the front here, as we can see. So what I'll do now is I'll just radius these. I'll draw those holes out to size. We'll bolt one bolt in for the pump and put the rubber grommets in and show you the final product. So here it is. One Magna Fuel Star 300 fuel pump bracket. So it's quite sturdy. You pick it up from the top, there's no flex in it. It's vibrate, vibration mounted. We've got our little rubber mounts with our crush tubes in them. So the pump can be solidly mounted. I've got to grab another bolt. Ended up just radiusing these front corners, which was fine. And that's pretty well it. So that will conclude another week's episode. So next week we're going to be on the wagon again. Um, I've got a big shipment of uh, Aeroflow fittings coming from Engine Masters. Um, so put the pump in, put the sump in the tank and start to make some fuel lines. So thanks for watching and see you next week.